Well, this is Joe McGee. Welcome to our podcast. Make sure that you subscribe and please share the podcast with your friends. That is the number one way you can help us reach people with God's love and healing. We love you guys. Hope you enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wednesday's Words of Wisdom, where we take a word out of the Bible. We try to find several scriptures about it, just sort of let you know what God was talking about. Now, there are tons of words. You know, you go to uh, W. Vine's Expository Dictionary and all the words used in the Bible and, and explains them and whether a noun or a verb or an adverb or an adjective and how it's used and what the Hebrew really w- meant uh, or the, and the, when it was translated into the Greek and what it meant. And so I love studying about words. And so every word in the Bible means something. God did not waste time. He didn't waste words. So what I did when I was a school administrator years ago, I'd take a few minutes every day, and I had a group of seniors, and i just pick one word. Hey, guys, today we're going to pick this one word, and we'll find several scriptures, try to explain what God was saying when he used this word. So the word today we're going to cover is the word teach, T-E-A-C-H. We've got teachers, people that teach. And so what was God saying when he meant this word? So we're going to give scriptures. This is all scriptures. All these are out of the New Living Translation, unless I give you something different. So these are all from the New Living Translation. I like that translation. I still study the King James. I've not left the King James. I just don't speak King James. So this is from the New Living Translation. The word teach, Psalm 25, verse 5. Lead me by your truth and teach me. He's praying. Lord, lead me by your truth and teach me. For you are the God who saves me. All day long, I put my hope in you. Man, that's powerful. You can run on that one for a week. Lead me by your truth and teach me. He's asking, God, I need you to teach me. We're the God who saves. All day long, I put my hope in you. Psalm 25, verse 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him, and he teaches them his covenant. The Lord is a friend to those who fear him. So I pray this every day, uh, Psalm 34, 11. I pray it every day. Father, I thank you for this day. This is the day you have made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Father, today I ask that you teach me and my family, my wife, my children, my grandchildren, their spouses. I ask you to teach me and my staff. Teach us to fear you. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, Proverbs 9, 10, and the beginning of knowledge, Proverbs 1, 7. Teach me to fear you. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. With that wisdom, Proverbs 3, 16, comes long life, riches, and honor. How do you get long life? I like to live a long time. I want to live as long as I can. Long life, riches. Who doesn't need riches? Everybody needs some cash. Long life, riches, and honor. I want to look good when I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I want to get honor. I want to bring honor to the name of the Lord. So how do you get long life, riches, and honor? You need to fear God. Why do you fear God? We need to ask him. Father, I gave you permission today to teach me and my family to fear you. Oh, that's a great scripture. Psalm 34, verse 11. Come, my children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. I will teach you to fear God. How do you you fear God? Ask God, he'll teach you. That's real simple, pretty simple. Psalm 37, verse 30. Psalm 37, verse 30. The godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. The godly offer good counsel. They teach right from wrong. You know, there's things that are wrong. You shouldn't do them. There's things that are right. You shouldn't do that. So it'll teach us the difference. Psalm 78, verse 5. Psalm 78, verse 5. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instruction to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children. Matter of fact, if you go and read all of Psalm 70, I want you to teach your children, your children's children, and all those of the household. How do you get wisdom? You've got to pass it on to the next generation. It has to be passed on to the next generation. You might inherit your father's wealth, but you don't inherit your wisdom. Somebody has to teach that to you. Psalm 86, verse 11. Psalm 86, verse 11. Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart that I may honor you. Starts off, teach me your ways, Lord. How are you going to learn the ways of God? You're going to ask him. What's he going to do? He's going to teach you. <laughs> Psalm 90, verse 12. Psalm 90, verse 12. Teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we may grow, we may grow in wisdom. What's he saying? Lord, teach us. Life's not that long. Eventually it ends. So help us live every day to honor you, take care of our family, be blessed to our neighbor. 
teach us to realize the brevity of life so that we, we, we may grow in wisdom. What do you want? I want to be wise. Wise, wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove. Psalm 94, 4, verse 12. Psalm 94, verse 12. Joyful are those, joyful are those you discipline, Lord, those you teach with your instructions. Joyful, joyful are those you discipline. You, you ought to be happy that I got on to you. I used to tell people all the time, you know, when Jesus came walking on the water that night in the storm in the Bible, uh, they're in the boat, uh, they're going over the other side of the Sea of Galilee, and all of a sudden a vicious storm broke out. And the waves are crashing into the boat, and the boat's rocking, and the boat's filling up with the water. All of a sudden, the lightning flashed, and they noticed Jesus was walking on the water. He's left the shore, and he's coming toward them. And so Peter yelled out, Lord, if that's you, ask me to come out there with you. And so Jesus said, well, come on. So in the middle of the storm and the waves are crashing, the lightning is flashing, Peter got out of the boat. And Peter actually began to walk on the water. And he's walking toward Jesus. Now, the other 11 apostles are in the boat and looking at this. And the boat's rocking there. It's hoping they don't drown. All of a sudden, Peter's walking on the water like Jesus is. And so he's heading out toward Jesus. And all of a sudden, the Bible says that Peter got his eyes off of the Lord. And he started looking at the wave on the left and the wave on the right. and said, man, this was a dumb idea. This was not smart. And when he got his eyes off Jesus, the Bible says he began to sink. Now, he's not only sinking, now he's drowning. And the Bible says Peter prayed the shortest prayer in the entire Bible, help, H-E-L-P, help, help, <laughs> help. And the Bible says Jesus reached down, grabbed him by the hand, and lifted him back up out of the water. And the first words out of Jesus' mouth were, O ye of little faith, O ye of little faith. Jesus got on to him for doubting. Well, at least he got out of the boat. Well, the, the Bible says Jesus did not get on to the 11. He did not correct the 11. He didn't criticize the 11. He didn't instruct the 11. Why? They're not doing anything. God doesn't get on to people that aren't doing anything. Listen, I played sports my whole life. So do my kids. Coach isn't yelling at the guy sitting on the bench. He's yelling at the guy that's in the game. He's trying to get him to do better. So I like this. Joyful are those you discipline. Lord, those you teach with your instructions. Who are the happy ones, the ones being taught? Psalm 119, Psalm 119, verse 66. Psalm 119, verse 66. I believe in your commands. Now teach me good judgment and knowledge. Lord, I believe in your word, but I need you to teach me good judgment and knowledge. Teach me how to be wise. Psalm 119, verse 130. Psalm 119, verse 130. The teaching of your word gives light so even the simple can understand. The teaching of your word gives light. I like that. Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on firm footing. And there's a lot in that. Let's read that one more time. Psalm 143, verse 10. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. May your gracious spirit lead me forward on firm footing. I don't know where I'm going today, but you're going to lead me. I don't know where I'm going, but I'll be on firm footing. Your gracious spirit's going to lead me today, Father. That's a great thing to pray every day. Proverbs 1, verse 3. Proverbs 1, 3. The purpose of Scripture, of the Word of God, is to teach people to live disciplined and successful lives, to help them do what is right, just, and fair. God, whatever you're doing today, God wants you to do what's right. He wants you to do whatever is just. He wants you to do whatever is fair. Why? He wants you to live a successful life. How do you live a successful life? Well, he's going to teach you. God's going to teach you how to live a disciplined and successful life. God promised, I will teach you how to live a successful life. Father, we come bold to the throne of grace. We ask you to teach us to live a successful life today in Jesus' name. Proverbs chapter 4, verse 11. Proverbs 4, verse 11. I will teach you wisdom's ways, and I will lead you in straight paths. I will teach you wisdom's ways. I will lead you in straight paths. Proverbs 5, 13. Proverbs 5, verse 13. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Now, this is, this is I've worked with high school kids for years. Oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I listen? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? This is somebody, he's hit the wall. He thought he knew everything. He realized after a while, you're not the smartest person on this planet. You don't know everything. You need help. 
You need, you need wise people around you to instruct you and teach you and correct you and confront you. So, oh, why didn't I listen to my teachers? Why didn't I pay attention to my instructors? Got a young man lamenting his life. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Proverbs 9, verse 9. Instruct the wise, and they'll be even wiser. Teach the righteous, and they will learn even more. You know, a uh, wise person never arrives. You realize something. I don't care how smart you are, you realize there's things I don't know. There's things I've not seen. I still need to be led by the Holy Spirit. I still need God's help. I still need God's favor. I still still need God's guidance. Oh, that's a good thing to get. So Proverbs 15, verse 33, Proverbs 15, 33. Fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Humility proceeds on it. The fear of the Lord teaches wisdom. Where do you get wisdom? Fear of God teaches me wisdom. The fear of God teaches me wisdom. And I like this in Proverbs 22, 19. Proverbs 22, 19. I am teaching you today, yes, you, so you will trust in the Lord. Lord, why are you teaching me so you're trusting God? Lord, why do you need to teach me so you're trusting God? Why why are we teaching our kids so they'll trust in God? Why do I need to teach my children so they'll trust in God? I mean, that's the whole bottom line. With God, all things are possible. Without God, nothing's possible. So what are you trying to do? Trying to teach you, trying to teach you, teach you the fear of God, teach you wisdom. It's a great, great lesson. The, The word teach. Look up some scriptures. We've just gone just through a few, but it'll inspire you. Thanks for this day. God bless, guys. Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.